Uh, I would like uh, to start our conference with general remarks uh, related to Project Cyber Emotions. So this conference uh, has two aims. Uh, first, we would like to show you results of four years um, European project, Collective Emotions in Cyberspace. Second, we, we would be thankful uh, to all colleagues that could comment our results. Third, uh, we hope that the conference will uh, make possible to exchange different concepts related to uh, cyber communities and emotions. Uh, so, uh, this is the plan of my short lecture. I will uh, start with concept emotions, cyber emotions, collective emotions, collective cyber emotions. Then I will show you the uh, project structure and main results uh, received from different layers of the project and our plans for the future. Uh, so, during this four years of the project, I understood that although we, we could think we understand the emotions, uh, we, we know very little about this and there's no agreement even on a common definition or a common uh, or, or a or number of emotions or number of variables that should be used to describe emotions. For sure, emotions are important for us, are important especially for our family life. And uh, one of the theories that the emotions were, uh, were evolving uh, because we, sometimes we should not think, but we need to react. Uh, and uh, in this, this is the reason that we, we possess also emotions. Uh, and what are collective emotions? This is not just a sum of various uh, uh, emotions. This is not just the fact that the people possess the same emotions, but we define collective emotions in the way that uh, there's a special phenomenon or the special state that emerges due to inter emotional interactions between uh, members of some groups. An example, is, uh, are emotions that could be observed at, uh, at stadiums uh, or at some uh, political events. Uh, and collectiveness of, of this phenomenon, as I will uh, stress once more, come, comes from the fact that there are interactions between participants. So it can be that there are emotions, there are many emotions, but they are not collective. But here you can observe the collectiveness of this phenomenon. Uh, about cyber emotions or emotions in cyberspace. So we know that we are uh, more and more communicating by internet and we are exchanging not only information, we are exchanging also uh, sentiments or we are expressing our emotions. So it's clear that uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, emotional transfer in internet, in cyberspace. And the question is, does this transfer lead to collective phenomenon that was that uh, for sure exists in the physical space? Uh, so we think it does exist. In fact, a development of new media already proved that people are communicating by internet and exchanging, as I said, also their emotions. And uh, here are examples where people uh, uh, were due to emotional interactions between people uh, were phenomena that were important already for the real, for the physical space, so-called uh, Arabian Spring uh, uh, observed a year ago uh, was in, in some way catalyzed, ca catalyzed by emotional interactions in, in the internet. Of course, also by info in information <laughs> exchange in the, uh, by the internet. It's called sometimes Twitter revolution. So this were the reasons that we started our project, that we uh, 
plant to perform uh, research to show that one can observe collective emotions, one can find some special properties of these collective emotions in cyber communities. Uh, this is our consortium. Uh, we started a project uh, uh, four years ago uh, with the total funds 3.6 million euro. Uh, there are altogether nine partners listed here with the leaders. As you can see, the project is highly interdisciplinary. There are people from computer science, uh, but also from physics, from social science, and we have also spe specialists for uh, 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 graphical animation and a representative of, of industrial company, Gameus, that tries to, to use our uh, output of our project in business. So the, aim, the main aim of our project is to understand the process of collective emotion formation in <coughs> communities. And the project consists of three layers. Uh, we are collecting data. The data then are uh, the raw data about uh, means records uh, of text uh, from uh, different forums, blogs, Twitter. Uh, then are classified regarding what what are the sentiments in this data. Then we try to develop uh, data-driven models uh, that show collective phenomena in this data. And these models are finally used to produce some uh, ICT outputs that could be useful uh, for uh, many, for other users. So expected impact of our project is not only uh, in theory to find uh, realistic models of emotionally reacting users, but also to develop new kind of intelligence intelligent self-adapting programs that we call cyber tutors or uh, cyber advisors for e-communities. Uh, three la layers of the project once more. So we have two work packages responsible uh, for empirical studies, data collection, and um, uh, data mining, it means extracting sentiments from raw data, from the text. Uh, we have a layer uh, of vertical work packages uh, that develop models and they, uh, they study the data. And we have the layer of, uh, out, of ICT output uh, where the tools are developed that could be used, that uh, could be the output of the whole project. Uh, let me start, uh, I think, from uh, the most important part of our project. This is the Centis Tank program developed by Professor Mike Tywell and his group in the University of Wolverhampton. Uh, this program uh, makes us possible uh, to, to study millions of data uh, using uh, automatic uh, methods of data mining and to extract emotional stages of, of the text. In fact, uh, you can download this, this program. This is free for academic research. And this is also the sort for some companies. So this is already one of outputs of our project. Uh, the program runs in such a way, and if, if you enter our web page, if you, can put any sentence, and from this sentence, uh, you will receive a, a number or two numbers. What are the negative and what are the positive charges in in, in this sentence? Because uh, the program make, makes possible at the same time to quantify negative and positive emotion in any piece of text. Uh, the quality of the program is, uh, is very good, and it means uh, this is uh, 
probably the best program already uh, that exists at the moment for automatic uh, sentiment analysis. Uh, this is the accuracy of this program when it is shown uh, for <coughs> different uh, subjects. Uh, of course, the, pro the, the quality of the program depends on the training phase. If, if the program, uh, uh, if, you, if one would like to use the program, just the author of the program, uh, for a new domain, then we need to train the program uh, using some special set of, uh, set of sentences. Uh, there's a, one of the first results coming from the program uh, that was shown by the Wolverhampton uh, group itself was the following that uh, we're surprised to observe that even some positive event like, uh, uh, like Oscar uh, prizes evoke many negative sentiments. And the negative emotions uh, will be constantly uh, observed in our studies and they, it seems that they uh, play very important role for, for the many communities. <coughs> uh, the same was observed also by Wolverhampton Group for uh, YouTube uh, uh, studies. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a positive correlation between number of negative comments and uh, uh, the activity uh, related to commenting on YouTube. So the negative comments drive commenting at, uh, at this, for this community. Uh, the second group that uh, is involved in, uh, in our project and that was responsible for experimental study is the uh, group from Jacobs University, led by uh, Professor Arvid Kappas. Uh, as our dean mentioned, emotions can be also directly measured uh, like uh, physical phenomena. But uh, being more exact, these are not the whole information about the emotions. These are some signals related to emotional stages of the people. And uh, these signals made us possible to find uh, that, for example, uh, uh, there is, uh, so this, the taste will be shown by, by Professor uh, Kappas at probably at, at the next lecture, uh, that one is in position uh, using this uh, observation to distinguish what kind of uh, sentences were written or read by a volunteer in such an experiment. So we can, we can uh, see the positive and negative uh, influence of different emotions on physiological stages of the, of the people observed by, in these experiments. And uh, the positive and negative emotions means the emotions that are transmitted uh, by the internet. So writing uh, uh, positive, uh, as I, I really repeat, and negative topics can be distinguished by uh, using uh, this, uh, this observation. Uh, now let me come to some results of Fiori group. We have three groups working in Fiori domain. Uh, why free? Because uh, we were expecting that it will be difficult to buy some unique model of, emotion, of collective emotions. So we tried to attack the subject from several directions. Uh, the group from uh, uh, ETH, from Zurich, <laughs> developed the model uh, that uh, uh, take into account at least two different dimensions or variables of emotion. It means valence and aerosol. And uh, in the model, it was possible to predict in, in which stage the, the, the group will evolve when it starts 
uh, from some distributions of valences and erosals at the very beginning. Uh, the next model was developed by um, uh, colleagues from Joseph Stefan Institute in Ljubljana. The model was uh, oriented toward networks where uh, there was um, the model aimed to, to find that uh, in the, during the emotional interaction, some special networks uh, po that are either positively or negatively uh, charged are developed. Uh, this uh, model is also uh, some, some way agent-driven model. Uh, so uh, people that are in, in the emotional stages can change their emotions and uh, this model can be also fitted to uh, um, data received from different communities. Uh, the model that was developed in Warsaw, in, uh, in the group that I, I, I led, uh, uh, was uh, also based on, on the real data. Here just uh, the uh, example what we mean by data. So we consider millions of uh, records in our studies to make, to make it representative. Records from different communities like BBC Forum, blogs, or, or DIG, <coughs> but were also other community studies. Uh, the uh, key object that was considered in our studies were so-called emotional clusters. As I said, uh, a number of people expressing some emotions is not a, a just a single number, is not a parameter that could say that there are collective emotions. If all people are, are positive, it does not mean that this is a collective state. So we would like to see emotional uh, uh, patterns that would uh, in some way express emotional interactions between the people. So for example, if we have, uh, if we have some comments on some blog, and for simplicity, let us assume that these comments could be uh, negative, objective, and positive. We are very frequently some short periods of, of, the, of the blog or, or, or some, some other community life where there are the same uh, emotions expressed. If we shuffle the original data, we receive something like this. So we still have some clusters, however they are shorter. And this is the, the distribution of the original clusters as compared to the shuffled data. It's, it's a proof if there is a difference between these distributions, if it's statistically meaningful difference between these two distributions, that in the original data there were some correlations, there were some interactions. And so it was the, the ground for, uh, for, for our concept of studying collectiveness of emotions. And indeed, we, we considered such a, something like this. Let us assume we have a cluster of four positive messages, what is the probability that the, next that the next message is also positive? If this probability is independent from the length of this cluster, if this conditional probability is independent from the length of this cluster, it means we have a random distribution of emotions in this community. There could be many positive uh, uh, comments, but there are no interactions since conditional probability is independent from the history. But in fact, we observe that this conditional probability that after n comments of, of some emotion, uh, the next comment possesses the same emotions, this conditional probability is dependent on the size of the cluster. Moreover, the longer is the cluster, the larger is this conditional 
probability, we have a kind of power law. So if there were many comments, the next comment is large, is large probability will be also of the same, of the same emotion. And uh, this, is, this is shown here at the data, this conditional probability scales with the size of the cluster. And you can see in W logarithmic scale, we have, uh, we have straight line that expresses this power law. And the slope of, of these lines, these are the lines for different communities and different emotions. Uh, the slope of these lines expresses this, this, this exponent. If this exponent equals to zero, it means there are no interactions. The larger is this exponent or the steeper is this line, the stronger are interactions in the community. And as I said, uh, we were indeed in position to observe such clustering of emotions in many communities. The, de the details are published in this paper. And the collective character of of the community of inter, uh, uh, emotions in the communities was only was not only proved by this observation. There were also statistics of avalanches performed by Ljubljana group, avalanches in in, uh, in networks. It, it means how much how how many uh, of uh, positive or negative uh, comments emerges. Uh, after a single positive or negative distribution of this avalanche is also a power law, and it's a kind of uh, another proof for the collectiveness of emotions. The group from Zurich, the ETH group, on the other hand, considers so-called Hurst exponent in, uh, for the time series analysis. If this Hurst exponent is around 0.5, uh, like, like here, it means there are no correlations in, 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 the, in the system. Uh, but it, it, in fact, for different communities, it was shown that this Hurst exponent is about 0 0.5, something like 10 or 20 percent. So uh, the, this shuffled data once more are shown here, no correlations. In real data, Hurst exponent is uh, above the, uh, the random value 0, 0.5. And uh, also the, the group from Berlin from, um, uh, shown that so-called triad analysis, so what are, what are the distribution of triangles, that in the triangles there are positive or negative emotion, that this triad analysis is far away from the random distribution uh, of predicted by the graph theory. So all these four plots show collectiveness of emotions in various cyber communities. Uh, now the question is how much, uh, how much collective or how strong are interactions are in these communities. As I said, in the, uh, in the model that was developed in, the, in our group, the exponent of, of, uh, of this power law uh, expresses the strength of these interactions. And we, we checked that this exponent is different for various communities. And interesting, if the uh, density of given emotion is large, then the exponent is small. If the density is small, this exponent is large. Uh, uh, this is also expressed here. We did not find a good law for this, but we found only this monotonical behavior. What does it mean? That if in some community uh, some emotions are minor emotions, they interact more. So the emotions that are rare for the community tend to cluster much more as compared to the random distribution. So uh, it, it was observed for all kinds of emotions, positive, negative, as well for neutral statements. 
Uh, so in some say, I, I know uh, the social scientists are sometimes saying that in minorities, there are stronger interactions. So what we're observing here in the minor emotions are also stronger interactions. Uh, the next question that we posed was the following. Uh, since we could observe a power law of increase of this conditional probability, the probability should be always smaller or equal to 1. So if the cluster is very large, it means that the conditional probability reaches 1. What does it mean, this special value? It means that for long clusters, if there is already a long cluster, no other emotions should be expressed. So there should be some critical value of the cluster length, and this critical cluster should be reached in some critical time. And we observed indeed that uh, in the course of time, there are some long clusters in, in real communities. And if such long clusters occur, then there are not, no, no other emotions or very uh, small impurities of other emotions. Moreover, we were uh, even in position to calculate uh, using our theoretical mod model what is the expected number of such uh, coherent states, permanent coherent states in the communities. And we checked uh, it, uh, we compared it to the real data and we found a quite good agreement. The paper now is now accepted in physical review E with exact with all details of this concept. Uh, now regarding once more the, the negative emotions. Uh, OK, as I said, there is concept that the emotions were developed in the course of evolution. And the negative emotions are important uh, in the sense that uh, feeling the negative emotions, we are sometimes reacting very fast. What about the internet? Usually in the reality, we are uh, not always, but uh, very frequently trying uh, to escape from negative emotions, like, like uh, this uh, picture. Uh, however, uh, the, the situation in the internet is different. Uh, what we found, uh, it was also found by, by the group for, uh, from Wolverhampton, uh, that in reality, uh, the negative emotions are a kind of fuel for the community life. Uh, here is a mean emotion in the cars of time. Uh, what you can see here, this is, these are plots corresponding to different, for, to uh, subgroups of discussion threads of different length. Uh, the more, uh, the more negative was the emotion at the very beginning, the longer is the discussion. And in the cars of time, the, the <coughs> discussion stops to be so negative. So the people are coming with many negative emotions. And uh, I'm not saying these are the same people. It's, uh, but the group as the total is less emotional at the very end. And the more emotional at the be very beginning, the longer is the discussion. This is shown once more. Here, the expected length of, of the discussion is the function of uh, average emotion uh, uh, of the first 10 comments. So in this sense, we can predict the, uh, the uh, uh, life of the, the length of, of the life of the community observing emotional uh, stages at the beginning of, for, of this community. Of course, only in the statistical sense, not, not for any special, but in the statistical, st statistical sense, you can see here the errors were not very large, and so the prediction uh, it, it brings, brings some knowledge. Uh, the other issue is something like this. So we asked, is it true that these are the only negative emotions that decay in time? And you can see that completely different group, the people that meet 
to collaborate on some common project. Uh, uh, this is a new, new version of Linux. And we, these people express very small fraction of negative emotions. Uh, very very, these are the people that communicate because they work together. Majority of, of, uh, of uh, comments are objective, and there's also a smaller fraction of positive comments. But here you can see that in the course of time, the number of the objective comments is decaying, and the, why the, the negative comments are staying approximately at the same level. And the number of positive comments is, in, is increasing. We are not counting the very end of the discussion when the people say, hello, let us meet in, in, in a, a, a day after tomorrow, something like that. This is the average of, of, the, of the community during, during the community life. Uh, so we are considering this effect as the following. At the very beginning, from the point of view of physics, the system was not in equilibrium. So there was some distribution of probabilities of two stages that differ one from the another. In the course of time, uh, this level, this stage, was not able to be checked, to be changed. However, these two levels could be thermalized. It means probabilities of these two levels should come to some equilibrium. One can calculate entropy of this distribution. And for, for physicists, it's a typical situation when the entropy increases in the course of time due to interactions in the system. So the, in the beginning, system was not in the equilibrium. And emotional interactions led, led to, to more equilibrium state that is expressed by uh, the same approximately probabilities at the end of, of the discussion. So one can calculate the increase of the entropy of this system, and one can say that in some sense, emotional dialogues, like many physical phenomena, are driven by uh, entropic growth, by phenomena that are out of equilibrium. And people meet, they are not in equilibrium, and in the discussion, they are coming to some equilibrium. And the result is the increase of the entropy. Uh, so um, well, I think I will skip maybe this slide. Uh, there are several outputs of our project that uh, came from the um, third layer. Uh, the group uh, from Vienna developed uh, special <coughs> programs uh, called interactive affect bots. These programs uh, make made possible to to influence some some groups, or at least to to quantify emotions of of some groups interacting by internet. Uh, uh, Dr. Martin Skovron will say more details on these programs. Uh, we hope that these programs uh, could be used in the future as a kind of advisors for community. Let us imagine we, we started a project. We are communicating by internet. We have some discussion list. Suddenly, somebody put a, a comment that evoked many emotional uh, uh, responses. The program could observe the community life, and the program could uh, give the warning. Uh, are you sure that this level of emotion is not leading you to uh, to the de de to, to the disruption uh, to to killing of your project? Because at the moment you are not talking about the project; you are just expressing your emotions. So it could be some automatic measurements, and such a bot could be the advisor for the group. Uh, so uh, the design of this program, of course, this is this is special. Uh, special was a special task given to the Vienna group. 
uh, this, this experiments are still performed uh, in collaboration with other partners of the project. The next uh, lectures will uh, give you more details about this. Uh, the group from Lausanne experimented uh, with uh, our knowledge about different components of emotions uh, as uh, used to graphical expression of emotions. So uh, the group was able to, to uh, take in, into account more than two dimensions of emotions. As I, I said at the very beginning, uh, we do not understand the meaning of emotion, but we think that emotions can be, uh, um, let us say, measured or can be expressed by some components. The first is obvious, this is called emotional violence, are we positively or negatively charged? Second is less obvious, is this so-called arousal, are we excited or not excited? The third is so-called dominance, but also higher dimensions. And uh, the issue is the following. Assume we would like to make some automatic uh, um, attachment to different components of, of these emotions uh, to graphics, to, to avatars in the system. And the, the, the Lausanne group was able to develop the model that made possible to use all these three components uh, of emotions in both face and body animations. This was not only for a single people, for a single person, this was also for crowd visualization with emotions. And uh, details, as I said, will be also presented by by, by the partner from Lausanne. Uh, our industrial partner, GameUs, uh, used uh, the project output in the way that first uh, adapt the sentence strength program to Polish language. And uh, at the moment, uh, this program was already uh, running and it was used to to, uh, to calculate the sentiment changes uh, in the cars of time for Polish users of Twitter. Uh, here you can see that there is a correlation between the temperature and the emotions. Uh, the lower is the temperature, uh, the more negative emotions are expressed. And here is, is a typical uh, um, path for changes of emotion uh, the day. So there are patterns, special patterns of emotions at, dependent on the, um, on the face of the day. Uh, the, um, uh, the Berlin group uh, might develop a special tool to visualize uh, um, emotional networks. So we are able to extract from large networks of users uh, expressing different emotions, sub-networks related to positive and negative emotions. Uh, and this is the, also the automatic uh, tool that uh, can be used by, not only by our partners, but also for, by other researchers. Uh, the uh, ETH group may, uh, use also the model to uh, for already for business applications, uh, they considered uh, some, uh, some statistic uh, on emotions when people are commenting different products. And maybe this, this model could be also uh, used by, by, by business. Uh, I'm just coming to, to, to conclusions of, of my short review. Uh, we are very proud that uh, the data collected in the project was considered by, uh, uh, by some reviewers as the data belonging to uh, 70 online databases that defined our planet. So we have uh, indeed uh, collected very interesting records. Uh, our sentence strength program developed in Wolverhampton was used during Olympic Games. Uh, there will be probably more details in the <coughs> presentation by Professor Taiwal. 
Uh, main results from the theoretical group. Uh, first, we shown that emotions are collective, that negative emotions uh, are frequently drive the community life, and there's uh, the phenomenon observed also in many physical systems, uh, equipartition of different stages. So in the course of time, probability of various emotions lead, lead to some uh, uh, stable distribution. Uh, the project, of course, published many papers, but we're also active at uh, different conferences, uh, exhibitions, uh, <coughs> and our plans for the future are the following. We are talking about starting a new project where interferences between emotions and uh, informations would be considered. We would like to use uh, results of the project to transfer them to industry, the sentencing program, the market analysis, emotion predictions. Uh, we are working about the book from our project. It, it could be published by Springer probably. The data are available for other groups and more results will be presented by other partners during this conference. Thank you very much for your attention.